Hello lovelies! Welcome back to another episode of my Minecraft series. I know it's been a little while since the last episode, which is why there are still Christmas decorations up. But we're finally back for episode 10 and we have a lot to do today, so let's get started. So, the first thing we're going to do is take down all of the Christmas decorations we have up in our world because it is definitely not Christmas anymore. Which means that all these decorations need to go. Aside from just taking down the Minecraft heads in our house, we also need to change our chests back to normal, as well as change our lovely kitties out of their adorable Christmas sweaters. So let's do that real quick. And there we go. And the last thing we need to do indoors is change out our red carpet back for our lovely pink one. And of course, we still have our Christmas lights up in here, but honestly, I just love how colorful and bright they are, so I think I'm gonna leave them up for a little bit longer. All right, and of course, we need to take down all the things from outside. As you can see, the snow has all melted around here. We'll probably just have to shovel up the rest of this when we get the chance. But it looks so weird with all these Christmas decorations around here and no snow. So obviously we're going to have to take down our Christmas tree and the candy canes we have around here. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Alright, so the Christmas tree is no more. And I took down all the candy canes we had around here as well as the lights we had hanging in places. The only thing left to do is to get rid of the snow we have around here. So let's get shoveling. Alright, now that it is officially no longer Christmas around here, it is finally time to start on the projects that I have planned for today. But first, right before I started recording this, I saw something over here. Hello? You still here? <gasps> there it is! It's a little cat! We need it, we need it, we need it. Let me go get my fish real quick. We don't have a black and white kitty yet. One of my goals of this world is definitely to try and tame one of every cat because I've never done that before. And I love cats. Okay, I'm gonna go get a lead. Because I don't want to be chasing this cat everywhere. And if I can get it on a lead, that'll make it a lot easier. I don't know where it went. Oh my god, I climbed all the way up there. Oh my god, no. No, 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 wait. Don't go to the snow. Don't go to the snow. Oh my god, if it falls in the snow. Oh my god, let me get a shovel ready. Let's hope there's no powdered snow around here. Oh my god. <gasps> Kitty, please. Ah, come here. Ah, <laughs> no. Ah. Oh, okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, 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 okay. Please get down. Wow, there's a lot of farm animals up here oh my god what happened to your face <laughs> oh god oh okay it does have eyes <laughs> it doesn't look like it has any eyes but it's just, it's, it's just the lighting it's just the lighting <laughs> it does have eyes it's okay all right let's bring you back down from the mountain oh wow this is a really nice view of my area from up here I love how much progress we've made on it so far, and I'm excited to make some more progress. <gasps> Yay! Now we have four kitties! I think we have too many cats for this small house, but not gonna stop me from taming more. Also, we will finally be naming these kitties soon. I just gotta get the name tags for it, but I think I have a way I can do that, but we'll get to that later in the episode. So for now, they're just gonna all hang out together. All right, now that we're finished with that little detour, let's get into what I have planned for today. So a little while ago, I posted a poll on my community tab asking you all what you wanted to see from me in episode 10. And overwhelmingly, you all wanted to see a bee sanctuary, which I think will fit in very nicely with our little area here. And I also have something extra special planned for it once we finished with it. So before we get into actually building the bee sanctuary, we need to decide on a place for it. And after looking around my area a while, I think I've decided that over here would be really nice for expanding. 
so what I'm thinking is I want to dig out this mountain a little bit and flatten out the area right here and this is where our bee sanctuary is going to go so it's going to live on the side of the mountain now I'm going to try my best to make it I, I want to make it spacious for the bees that are going to go inside but I also don't want to make it too big I also don't want to ruin the natural look of our area here but I think if we carved out a little bit of this space right here, I don't think it will mess with it too much. Something else I plan to do is I want to flatten out the area right here as well so I can make a nice little pathway going through it as well as something else to put here as a nice entrance into our bee sanctuary over here. So before I can start building anything, we have a ton of terraforming to do, which means I'll see you all in about five to ten hours six and a half hours later so it's been many many hours later and i may have gone a bit overboard with the terraforming this time i didn't mean to i swear i i i'm not even done technically but we're at a point where we can actually start building now so, let's show how insane I am. So, as you can see, this place looks a lot different now. <laughs> My initial plan of carving into the mountain, uh, I wasn't able to carve into it as much as I initially thought I would be able to without ruining the look of this beautiful mountain. So I ended up having to extend this way more and in turn meant I had to extend this part more. So <laughs> basically I went through a ton of shovels and a lot of dirt. Like, like a lot, a lot of dirt. So my plan for this area, as you can probably already guess, I plan on putting our lovely bee sanctuary on this little cliffside area here, right next to the cherry blossom trees, and we'll probably plant some more around here as well. And in this giant open space we have here now, I do have a plan for it, but we will get to that after we build our bee sanctuary. This area may change a little bit as time goes on as well because I'm not completely finished with it but I spent so long terraforming that I just really needed a break from terraforming and this is enough space for what I want to do. Alright, so I have gathered up all the materials we're going to need for building our bee sanctuary. I'm going for kind of like a greenhouse sort of vibe. So, all that's left to do now is to start building. Let the time lapse begin.
look at our beautiful bee sanctuary. I think it turned out so cute. Obviously, there's still a couple of things that need to be done, like adding a bunch more foliage around here, as well as filling up the inside, obviously, because it is very empty in here. But as you can see, there's plenty of sunlight that comes through for our lovely bees that we're gonna put in here. But before we actually put any bees in here, we need to make it nice in here for them. So I'm gonna work on gathering all the flowers and leaves I have to make sure our bees are gonna be nice and happy in here. And I'm gonna gather up all my honeycomb so I can make plenty of bee nests for them. So I'll get back to you all when I'm finished decorating. All right, after a ton of leaves and a ton of flowers, our bee sanctuary is finally finished. Doesn't it look so cute? It definitely looks a lot, whoop, ignore that. It definitely looks a lot nicer with all the flowers and greenery around. As you can see, I placed a bunch of flowers around as well as placed a bunch of leaves on the outside as well as on the inside. And I also bone meal the grass around the area. And then on the inside, it is a bee paradise in here. I think it looks super pretty in here. I love it so much. I ended up making a nice little pathway to our other set of doors right here. We have a ton of beehives on either side for all the bees we're gonna have in here. I don't know if this space is quite big enough for the amount of bees that could fit in all these beehives, but I wanted to make sure we had plenty of space regardless. I also planted plenty of flowers around for them to keep them happy, and I even placed some honey and honeycomb in each of the corners here as well as some mini trees to make it feel a bit more like a greenhouse vibe and I also have a little bit of storage over here to keep our extra honeycomb and honey so the sanctuary is all finished now all that's left is to get some bees in here so obviously we already have some bees that we have surrounding our farm here now, I could move all these bees into the bee sanctuary over there, but I actually want to keep these bees here because I want them to keep helping my crops grow here. So instead, I'm going to just breed the bees we have around here and I will be moving those bees into the bee sanctuary and breed more of them in there as well. Because I want a ton of bees in there. Make a baby. <gasps> Where is it? Oh! Cute. I love the little bees. They're so adorable. Yay! Now we have three little bee babies around here. And I'm pretty sure that all the hives around here are actually full. So they should be looking for a hive once we're finished. Okay, we got all the baby bees. Oh, look at them. They're all so cute. They are ready to move into a new hive i hope you guys love your new home i made it especially for you come inside guys welcome to your new sanctuary oh they all look so cute and little so i'm gonna continue checking in on these guys when they're full grown and continue breeding them so we can start to fill this place with many many bees all right, with our bee sanctuary built and decorated, it's time to move on to the next project I have for today. So you may have noticed that I created this giant open space over here, and you may be wondering what I'm going to do with it. So one of the other things that you all voted on in that same poll you voted for the bee sanctuary in was a bunny flower garden. Now I know that one technically didn't win, but I thought it'd be really cute to create a flower garden alongside our bee sanctuary since they kind of go hand in hand with each other. So that is what I plan to use for this giant space. Now you may be wondering what even is a bunny flower garden? And honestly, I wasn't even sure when I originally wrote that, I just thought it sounded cute. But after a bit of experimenting in another world, 
I have figured out how to make it a really cute flower garden. And I'm so excited to finally build it for you all. We are going to need every single flower I own and all the leaves I can carry. All right, so I have gathered all the flowers and all the leaves I have. And so some people might say that this is too many flowers, but I think it's just the right amount. Plus it's going to turn out really pretty in the end. So let's get to planting some flowers. Alright, so as you can see, we have finished our wonderful flower garden. Now, I will admit it looks very flat <laughs> around here because the whole garden's pretty flat looking, but I plan on bone mealing the heck out of this place and planting a bunch of trees to make it feel less flat and boring. But I think it looks really beautiful. You can just take a nice stroll around the bunny and come out the other side here. And eventually I will be linking up the pathway to this garden and linking it up to our bee sanctuary over there. And I will say now that I finally have this finished, there is something that I desperately need to do. So I really want to make a map of our area, well maybe a couple, but since we have a secret little bunny head in our flower garden and we can't see it from eye level, I really want to see what it will look like on a map. Oh no, it got cut off! And it looks really weird, what the heck? Alright, well I filled in the rest of our map, and it's okay that it's cut off a little bit because this is why I made extra. So let's map out the rest of the area and see what it looks like. Alright, I have successfully mapped out our entire area. Now we just need to figure out where we want to put a map. I'm thinking maybe right here would be nice. Bam, 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 bam. One, two, three, four. Oh, it looks so cute. You can definitely see the bunny on the map. It almost looks like a moldy bunny, which is not what I was going for, but it still looks adorable nonetheless. And you can see our little house down here. It looks so tiny compared to everything else on the map. One day we'll fill this map with more things, and I'll definitely update this map once we get the paths all connected up, because I think that'll look a lot nicer. So now that we have a lovely map of our area so far, there is actually one more thing that I would like to add to our lovely bunny garden. So even though we do have a bunny face in the center of our garden, there is actually one more thing I want to add to this to truly make it a bunny flower garden. And that is to get some actual bunnies and have them roam free in the garden itself. And what better place to keep the bunnies than in the center of the garden, the bunny face. So all we need is to gather some bunnies somewhere around the area and bring them here to their new home. I got plenty of carrots, 
dandelions, and some leaves. Because that's going to make this a whole lot easier. So the first place I'm going to look for bunnies is in our cherry blossom biome right over here. Because as you all may remember in episode 1, there were a bunch of cute bun buns in this biome. So let's start there. <gasps> a bunny! I knew there were still bunnies here. Do you have any friends? It doesn't look like it. Well, we have to start somewhere, so let's just... Oh. Yay! We got a bunny. Let's go quickly bring it back home. And hopefully find some other bunnies. Wait, where'd it go? Wait, what? What happened to it? Bun bun? Oh, what the heck? You got stuck! How'd that happen? Did you forget how to jump? Oh no, you can jump just fine. Come on. My bunny's having issues, guys. It won't jump up this block. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be easy once I got the bunny. Okay, okay, come on, come on. The sun's going down, we gotta move. Yes, yes, come on, come on. Oh, I'm gonna have to sleep and let go of this rabbit. Why do you keep getting stuck on one block? I will get back to you all once I get this bunny back home. Because this is taking forever. I didn't think this would be this difficult. I thought the hardest part was going to be getting the bunny on the lead. It's supposed to be easy from there. Alright, we got our first bunny in the bunny garden. Now... Please don't move while I go get a fence to temporarily tie you up. Oh, thank goodness you've barely moved. Thank you for waiting so patiently. Now if I could just get you back on the lead. And we'll put you right here for now. Now I shall come back with friends. Hopefully. Two hours later. Oh, you can't. It's raining. No. No bunnies are going to be out in this weather. Oh. Never mind. There's a bunny right there. We already have this color, but it's a bunny. I might see if I can see any other bunnies around this area as well. Just since I'm in the area. Dude, I'm not even going up there. Come on. Oh. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I almost didn't see you! There's a black bun bun! Please, don't run from me. Oh, okay. We got it. We got two bun buns. Okay, and we got a different color. Oh my god, it's so exciting. Okay. Now, I have to try and get these guys back. And it is very dark and it's raining. Let's try to sleep real quick. This is gonna take a long time getting these guys back. So once again, I'll be back once I get them back there. So it turns out that this is one of the most difficult things I think I have ever done in Minecraft. I spent almost 20 minutes trying to lead these rabbits back to the bunny garden with them getting stuck on almost every single block on the way. I even ended up signing some more bun buns on the journey. So now I was trying to lead three bun buns through this forest with every one of them getting stuck every two seconds. And then it came to the point where the entire rest of the journey was going to be climbing up a mountain. And instead of losing my mind trying to lead these rabbits all that way, I decided to put the bunnies in a hole at the base of the mountain and then do what any sane person would do and proceed to dig through the mountain. Yes, I decided to dig hundreds of blocks through the mountain just to avoid torturing myself any longer. So I carved my way through the mountain creating a safe path for my bunnies until I realized that I had another problem. I had to pause the game because as I was walking around, 
Where is he? It's a black kitty! Which we do not have yet, so I'm gonna go get my fish so we can go add it to our household. Yay! So now we have one, two, three, four, five cats in this small little house. Time to get back to the task at hand, which is bringing these bunnies over to our place. And for that, we need some water. So, I successfully dug a tunnel all the way back to here. From where the bunnies are, way over that way. But, it's all the way down there. And, uh, I don't think bunnies can climb walls. And there is no way that I'm going to make a staircase for them that leads to the surface. Because that would be no different than leaning them up the mountain in the first place. So, I decided that the best option would be to make it a water elevator to shoot them up to the surface and hopefully not have them die. But before I can start getting to work on actually making the water elevator, you need soul sand to make a bubble elevator which I do not have. Which means I'm gonna have to go all the way to the nether just to bring some bunnies here. This is not what I wanted to do today. <laughs> all right, let's get this over with. Oh man. Who knew it would be hours of work just to try and get some bunnies to your area? So I journeyed into the nether just for a little bit of soul sand. And ignoring the many struggles I had on this nether journey, I ended up finding some soul sand relatively close to where we found the nether fortress. I managed to make myself a safe path down to the soul sand, where I quickly collected as much soul sand as I could, so hopefully I will never have to come back here for soul sand again. And I am happy to report that I made it out of the nether safely, and I did not die trying to get bunnies for a bunny flower garden. Oh my god! Oh. Okay, it works, it works, it works, it works! Oh my god. Alright, now that we got a very functional bubble elevator, it's time to finally go all the way back to get those bunnies and hopefully not have any problems. Alright guys, we got a long journey ahead of us. There should be no possible way for you to get lost or stuck in this tunnel. It is very, very safe. I don't care what you all may think, this was a hundred times easier than trying to get them over that mountain. Alright, now here's the moment of truth. Will they make it up the elevator without dying? One more. Oh, they're all safe, I think. Where are they? Where's the other one? Oh, they're all safe! It worked perfectly! Oh my goodness, I am so happy. And now the rest of the way is downhill, so we should not have any issues from here. Yay! We have four little bunnies in here now. I'm just gonna all tie them up here just for now. So originally, I wanted to get more different types of rabbits than just these two, but after all that trouble I just went through, I think that's going to be a mission for another day. Alright, the last thing to do is to let these bunnies roam free in their brand new home. And I hope they're really happy here. Alright, as the final thing that we're going to do in today's episode, we are finally going to get some name tags for these guys. Which means I'm going to be digging up some comments from a couple months ago to look at all the name suggestions that you all had for them. Alright, so in order to get some name tags for these guys, it was pointed out to me a long time ago on a live stream that I can get name tags from my villagers, which I completely forgot about. Oh my goodness. Why is there an iron golem in here? How am I going to get you out? You're not going to fit through the door. Well, we'll 
deal with that another day. <laughs> so after I was pointing out to me that I can get name tags from these guys, I ended up leveling up one of my villagers, which I think is this guy right here. And he should sell name tags. So obviously it is pretty pricey for one name tag, but that's nothing a little trading can't do. So I'm going to be trading up with these guys until I get enough name tags for all the animals I want to name. Alright, after trading everything I have with these guys, I managed to get two stacks of them rolled. And I'm hoping that that is enough for all the name tags we need. Five and six. That was all my emeralds. <laughs> but we got all the name tags we need for now. I'll have to keep up with trading with these guys to make sure we get even more name tags in the future. Because I have plans to name a lot of things in the future. So we're going to need all the name tags we can get. Alright, I got all the name tags. As well as some colors to dye their collars with as I name them. So let's start with our first two names, which will be Calico, for the Calico Cat, of course. And they will be getting Magenta Collar. And Possum, for our Orange Cat. And they will be getting a Light Blue Collar. Next up we have our Tuxedo Kitty, which I will be naming Phoba. And they will be getting a Pink Collar. And for our brand new Black Cat with no ears, we will be naming them Coco, and they'll be getting a yellow collar. And last but not least, we have our first kitty, which we'll be naming Tiramisu. And their collar is already purple. It's so nice to finally be able to name all our kitties. Thank you to everyone who left comments in the previous videos with their name suggestions. And if you have any name suggestions for pets in the future, please leave them in the comments below. Now you all may have noticed that I made an extra name tag and that is because there's going to be one more thing we're going to name today and for that we will have to go over to our lovely bee sanctuary we built. So something special I would love to do with our bee sanctuary and our bunny garden down here is be able to name all the bees and bunnies after you lovelies. So if any of you lovelies are interested in being named after a bee or a bunny, please leave a comment saying you want to be named after one. And in the next episode, hopefully you'll have a bunch of new things to name. Now technically, I'm not going to name any of these bees after a subscriber today, but someone did make the request that I should name something Dinnerbone. And I think a bee would be perfect, so we are going to choose you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is just as funny as I was hoping it would be. <laughs> so we have our first bee named in the bee sanctuary. And they are amazing. And with that, I'm going to end this episode here. I know this episode is going to be a lot longer than the previous ones. But I wanted to make it longer for you all since it's been a while since I've been able to make Minecraft videos. And I was having a lot of fun being able to play the game again. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, remember to leave a comment below saying that you want to be named after a bee or a bunny, as well as if you have any name suggestions for any pets in the future. And maybe throw some added fun, tell me what your favorite Minecraft block is. But with that, I hope you all have a lovely rest of your night slash day, and I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye! Usually I would wave goodbye, but I'm scared I'm going to accidentally punch one of the bees, so I'm just going to stay very still. Boop. <laughs>